I'd like to thank Viv, Rahul, and Aurora for the opportunity to speak on the state of the art of pose. Here are my disclosures. To understand the pose procedure, it's important to understand the surgical analogs that were behind its development, as well as the differences between endoscopic suturing and endoluminal plication. Here on the left, we see a vertical banded gastroplasty, and this did inspire several endoscopic procedures for weight loss, which we'll touch on. And uh, here we have the uh, surgical imbrication procedure. So the differences here are the VBG really focuses on creating a small pouch or sleeve along the lesser curvature, whereas the gastric imbrication procedure folds that greater curvature in. And uh, uh, that's the primary difference between many of the, the procedures that we perform endoscopically. Here are some endoscopic procedures that were inspired by that vertical banded gastroplasty analog. The first was the Roberto Fogel a suturing procedure or endoluminal a vertical gastroplasty. And uh, you can see it's performed with a barred endocinch device, which is a suction based suturing device using one suture uh, running that to create this small pouch or sleeve along the lesser curve. Then this is the toga procedure, which was performed with an endoscopic stapling device. Again, kind of targeting that lesser curved side to create this small narrow pouch and this also restricted its outflow a little and more recently we have the endo zip procedure which we're going to hear more about uh, today at the course so again uh, these procedures uh, are, are not available currently but the endo zip is in ongoing clinical trials here we again see the surgical imbrication procedure and there's two ways generally speaking that we can achieve this endoscopically one is with endoscopic suturing where we get very predictable mucosa to mucosa tissue opposition and it's full thickness. Uh, and we also get some cirrhosis to cirrhosis tissue opposition with this as well, but it's somewhat less predictable. And then with uh, plication procedures where we get very predictable um, cirrhosis to cirrhosis tissue opposition, but you can't cover uh, as much ground as quickly with this. And here we see some endoscopic procedures that were inspired by that imbrication surgery. The original was the trim procedure, which used a suction-based suturing device to run proline suture along the greater curvature and was the predecessor to ESG, which uses a very similar suturing pattern, but with a full thickness suturing device. Um, and then uh, we have a plication procedure seen here with the endomena device, where tissue is pulled into these uh, jaws and then uh, tissue anchors placed, very similar to with a USGI device creating uh, independent tissue plications along the greater curvature. So these procedures are covered in more detail throughout the course, but it's important to kind of have a general understanding of them to uh, understand how and why the POSE procedure was developed. The POSE procedure stands for Primary Obesity Surgery Endoluminal, and it can be performed two different ways. The original uh, procedure involved placement of plications in the gastric fundus, which was thought to prevent fundal accommodation, leading to earlier activation of stretch receptors and an earlier sense of fullness. Uh, this was also thought to potentially lead to a more rapid transit of food to the antrum. The more recent version involves placement of plications in the gastric body, more similar to the patterns used for ESG. And uh, this is done to narrow the width of the stomach as well as shorten the length of the stomach. And it's thought that this leads to a, a slower of transitive food from the fundus to the antrum, again, triggering a kind of a prolonged sense of fullness and uh, absence of hunger. The pose procedure is performed with the incisionless operating platform, which involves several components. First, we have a large operating endoscope, which is roughly 18 millimeters in outer diameter and the control section is seen here. It has four large channels, two of which are uh, over six millimeters in diameter. One accepts an ultra thin endoscope or nasogastric scope for visualization. And the other accepts the GPROX tissue approximation device. And you see the handle of that here. And this is what is used to hold the tissue in place as the plications are formed. The smaller channel accommodates uh, a GELIX device, which is a tissue helix, which acquires the tissue to pull it into this tissue approximation device. And then the tissue approximation device itself has a channel in it that accepts a GCATH catheter, which is a hollow needle housing two tissue anchors. And we see these tissue anchors more up close here. They're made of zero 
braided polyester non-absorbable suture with a nitinol cinch on the proximal end. And these are used to hold the tissue plications in place. One is deployed uh, distally and one is deployed proximally. These tissue plications are very durable. Uh, you can see here that they are full thickness in nature and they do provide serosa to serosa tissue opposition. On animal histology studies, these plications really uh, fuse together in about 30 days and they're also very durable clinically with many studies showing them to be intact at uh, uh, more than two years out. This is an animation of the original pose procedure and you can see that we're focusing on the gastric fundus. Tissue is acquired with a helical grasp and pulled into the G-Prox device and then the uh, G-Cath needle is passed through that full thickness fold of tissue and one of the tissue anchors is deposited distally to the tissue. The needle is then withdrawn, the device opened up and tissue released, and a second tissue anchor is deployed proximally and then that's pulled together to create the plication. These are placed throughout the fundus and uh, uh, this is some data on the early work. So we were part of the initial first in human study in 2009, which delivered about a 27% excess weight loss. They then tripled the size of the device from 16 millimeters to 33 millimeters and uh, moved the studies to Europe where they had even better weight loss, over 60% excess weight loss in many of those studies. And you can see here what the uh, stomach looks like a year after these plications are placed. It's very durable and uh, you can see substantial reduction in the size of the, uh, of the fundus. The procedure was then studied in a multi-center randomized sham control trial. You can see the design here. Um, and it was a two to one randomization with patients getting pose and lifestyle modification or a sham procedure and lifestyle modification. You can see the inclusion criteria here and the co-primary efficacy endpoints uh, were a difference in mean percent total body weight loss with a super superiority margin of uh, greater than 3% and a responder rate of at least 50% defined by a total body weight loss of 5% uh, or more. Unfortunately, the procedure did not meet its efficacy endpoints, having only a 5% total weight loss. And although this was statistically significant compared to the sham group, it did not achieve the required 3% super superiority margin. This was in large part due to a flawed sham study design. However, we don't have time to discuss all the details of this right now. And here we see the uh, second version of the procedure, uh, distal pose or pose 2.0. And uh, we have a normal looking stomach there to begin with. And we start by working on the distal stomach and near the incisura. And our first set of plications uh, really aim to reduce the width of the stomach. And we call these uh, the distal belt plications. So you can see here that they're uh, going perpendicular to the greater curvature, the, the length of the greater curvature there. And uh, again, they're used to reduce width. And this was originally done with the smaller device. Uh, with the larger device now, you get quite a dramatic reduction in that width. And uh, here we're doing suspenders. So uh, these are running along the length of the greater curvature longitudinally, and they reduce the length of the stomach. So you can see that was uh, the first row of suspenders there. In the second row, we're putting our third plication in this row here. So typically we might put four uh, or five plications in the distal belt, and then usually uh, three plications in each of the two suspenders. And then what we'll do is we'll uh, make a proximal belt as well, again, reducing the width at the top of the stomach uh, at the uh, uh, junction of the fundus and the, uh, the body here. So you can see it's quite snug. Even with a, the smaller device, we can create a nice snug um, sleeve there. This is what it looks like afterwards. You still have a nice little fundic pool there to collect food and then a nice tight a narrow body to stomach that is a, a shorter as well as a more narrow. And here are some early results utilizing this approach. You can see again the distal pose working on the body rather than focusing mostly on the fundus. And we get about a 15% total weight loss at six months in this first in human series. Uh, and you can see that equates to about a 37.9% excess weight loss 
with 100% of patients achieving at least 5% total weight loss and 80% achieving 25% excess weight loss. Uh, this was used across all BMI categories and uh, rather equivalently, and there were no serious adverse events. This procedure has also been studied in Spain, and you can see here this is uh, a series of over 70 patients, again, uh, looking at all BMI categories here, and uh, they found a 17.8% uh, total weight loss at 12 months, and that's about a 7-point decrease in BMI. And what was interesting here is that uh, the, the higher the class of obesity or the uh, greater the BMI, the more weight was lost. So you get about a 20% total weight loss with obesity class 3 uh, versus about a 15% with obesity class one. And finally, we have a relatively novel procedure, which is a post procedure with an anti-reflux component. And here you can see the upper endoscopy with a Hill grade two hiatus. And uh, we also always do end of flips on these cases. And you can see the DI is seven with a high pressure zone of about 1.5 centimeters. So we start by doing the anti-reflux component, which uh, has plications that are aiming at elongating the intra-abdominal uh, portion of that LES, but also reducing its, its width. You can see our typical configuration here showing the posterior and anterior surfaces uh, lesser and greater curves. And we're working in retroflexion here. You can see our first plication. It's working on really pulling that, uh, that LES down and elongating the intra-abdominal segment. And we'll do a series of these. And uh, we're trying to really uh, not only uh, you know, elongate the intra-abdominal esophagus, but also make that angle of hiss a little more acute. Working on uh, you know, pulling down those sling fibers and tightening up the clasp fibers. And here we're shooting uh, kind of across, so we're having a, a bit of narrowing here at the LES as well. And you can see it looks substantially different after several plications are placed. We then uh, perform the typical uh, distal pose procedure that you've you've already seen. Um, you know, working on forming a distal belt initially, and then running a system suspender plications as well. Now, many patients would benefit from procedures such as this. Uh, you know, they do fall in the cracks here, um, especially BMI class one. There, uh, oftentimes, um, aren't many options for them, uh, and uh, class two as well that have a reflux as well as uh, obesity. We know that the sleeve gastrectomy is not necessarily the best option for those patients. Of course, people with uh, class three obesity would do quite nicely with a renal gastric bypass, but there are several people that would qualify for something like this. And here you can see we're doing the procedure with a larger uh, grasper and using that same pattern that we've already outlined. That's what the final appearance looks like there. And uh, you can see here the DI has improved from 7 to 3, and the high pressure zone is now 4 centimeters instead of 1.5. So uh, very early results in this, but uh, uh, very encouraging nonetheless. And you can see that uh, this pose procedure, gastric plication, does fit nicely within the spectrum of care uh, between balloons and the various surgical options. And long-term data is on the way. So in conclusion, endoscopic gastric plication is proving to be effective and to have an important role in the treatment of obesity. Applications are clearly durable and they are not endoscopically removable or reversible, unlike with ESG, as been proven by Alcatani and others where you can really remove those, which uh, is, is clearly a difference between this uh, technique and, and traditional suturing. And combination therapies and personalized treatment programs are now the keys to future success. Thank you for your attention.